Starting off this countdown, we have death. Now this might seem very weird, but for the longest time, it was illegal to die. Yes, you heard me. This law is said to date back to the Greek island of Delos in the 5th century BC. The island was considered a very holy place to the ancient Greeks, so they decided they needed to purify it. By 6th century BC, all dead bodies buried in sight of the island's main temples were actually dug up and removed. They didn't want any dead bodies near this holy place. Turns out that wasn't enough for them though, and they ended up declaring that all dead bodies on the island must go. Then they got even more carried away and just said that the act of death itself was illegal. Which is wild to me, like what if you accidentally die? Like how are they gonna arrest you anyways? Like you're dead at that point, doesn't even matter. But the ancient Greeks were not the only ones with this law. In 2005, the mayor of a Brazilian town introduced a law that made death legal. He implemented this law as an attempt to solve the city's problem with lack of burial spaces. And three towns in France also have this law. They have made death illegal since 2000. And that's because they were going to build more cemeteries, but their plan got rejected. So instead, they're like, Okay, well, if we can't have more space to bury the dead, then just dying is illegal. You can't die. Coming in at number nine, we have the pet hair. Now, America has some pretty strange laws. If you wanna see a video on all the weirdest laws in America, make sure to smash that like button and let me know in the comments below so that I know. Now, in Delaware, you are banned from selling your cat or dog's hair. First off, who is out here buying cat and dog hair? Second, if this is a thing, then dog groomers would be rich. So apparently some people like to wear dog or cat fur, kind of like how people wear rabbit fur jackets. And so I guess there was this whole hair selling ring that they needed to crack down on. According to the law, and I quote, in Delaware, a person is guilty of the unlawful trade in dog or cat byproducts in the second degree if the person knowingly or recklessly sells, barters, or offers for sale or barter the fur or hair of a domestic dog or cat or any product made in whole or in part from the fur or hair of a domestic dog or cat. So don't do it folks, your pet poodle might shed a lot, but don't even think about scraping your couch or leggings to get as much hair as possible to sell. In our 8th spot today, we have the sharing of Netflix. Who here actually owns a Netflix account? Versus who here knows someone with a Netflix account that you are using for free? Let me know in the comments below. Now I ask this because in Tennessee, it is illegal to share your Netflix password. That is right. That is an actual law that was passed in 2011. Now apparently this law is mainly directed at hackers who would sell login credentials and passwords to people. But it also applies to the people who let their friends mooch off of their account for free. But if you live in the same household as the person then it's fine, you're allowed to share accounts. But if you don't, right to jail. In our seventh spot we have the wild swans. Now I did not know this, but in the UK, Every wild swan technically belongs to the crown. This has been a law since the 12th century. I mean, I don't know why you would want to put a claim on swans, but okay. Apparently, back in the day, swans were a delicacy, and they loved eating them at banquets and feasts, so they put a claim on all swans. But don't worry, allegedly they are no longer eaten. Allegedly. Now, since the swans belong to the crown, this means that anyone who injures or kills a swan can be prosecuted. And if you steal a swan, it's considered theft. In our six spots, we have marry a dead person. The fact that this is a law in the first place, it concerns me. Now, there was a time way back in the day in France where people could marry a corpse, but only if the family members consented to it. For example, if your partner died in battle before you could get married, or if you were pregnant with their child, then you could easily get married to their dead corpse. And by doing so, it would make your child legitimate. But people couldn't just be like, ooh, Nancy's dead, I had a crush on her forever, now I can finally marry her. No, that's not how it worked. In fact, in 1959, there was a spike of people getting married to their dead partners. On December 2nd, 1959, the Malpasse Dam in France burst. As a result, 423 people lost their lives. After that event, tons of people were getting married to their deceased partners. And as recently as 2017, someone married their partner posthumously. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the smiling. 
In Milan, ever since the 19th century, there has been a law where it is a legal requirement to smile at all times. Even if you're having a bad day, you better be smiling. The only exception being during funerals or hospital visits. Now, I don't know about you, but my cheeks would kill me if I had to smile all day every day. Now, it is very unlikely for you to get in trouble if you're caught not smiling, but they have handed out fines for it before. Now, you may be asking me, Lindsay, why is this a law in the first place? To make Milan a happier place? No. This law dates back to when Italy was under Austrian rule. They used this law as a way to force people to accept foreign governance. They thought the people that weren't smiling were the ones against this, so they were easy to spot. But obviously this rule hasn't been enforced in years. In our fourth spot, we have getting drunk in a pub. I mean, it makes sense that if you go to a pub, maybe you'll have one too many drinks and you get a little drunk. Well, don't even think about doing this in the UK. The UK statute actually prohibits people from getting drunk in a pub, the place where you go to drink. This law applies to pretty much any establishment in England and Wales that isn't private property. It just seems so silly though. You would think a pub is the one place you could get drunk. Now this is an offense under the Criminal Justice Act of 1968. This law states that under section 12 of the 1872 Lysing Act stipulates that every person found drunk on any licensed premises shall be liable to a penalty which currently stands at 200 pounds. Moving on to number three, we have the runny nose. Now this is another weird law from the UK, this time from Newmarket in Suffolk. Basically, this is the birthplace of horse racing. It was extremely popular in around 1606, and it became a huge business. So big, in fact, that they passed a number of laws to help protect their horses. One of them being making it illegal to blow your nose in the street. They were scared that the racing horses would get sick and not be able to compete and it would damage their business. So yeah, anyone who was caught blowing their nose back then would be fined. Even if you were caught walking around while sick, you were fined. Don't worry, these laws aren't a thing anymore. In our second spot today, we have the criminal animals. Did you know that back in the day, animals could be tried in court for criminal offenses? I literally can't imagine that, like a chicken taking a stand in court because it stole its neighbor's feed, but alas, it was a real law. In the Middle Ages, people tried animals in court. I kid you not, mice and insects got trials for destroying grain or damaging churches. Whereas larger animals like pigs and horses got trials for injury or murder. If they were found guilty, which they usually were, they can't really defend themselves, they would receive the death sentence. But it's not like they know what murder is or what they're doing. I mean, one time a pig in France killed a youngling and it got hanged for murder. Isn't that wild? Just thank gosh these laws aren't around anymore. And in our number one spot today, we have the pregnant women. Have you ever wanted to get away with murder? And I hope your answer is no, Lindsay, I'm not insane. But if you answered yes, well, it turns out it's pretty easy if you live in New Hampshire. All you gotta do is be a woman and be pregnant. In 2017, New Hampshire passed an anti-homicide law. New Hampshire Senate Bill 66 was all about fetal homicide, saying that a fetus is a person by 20 weeks. So if you accidentally killed this fetus, let's say in a car crash, then you would be punished to the fullest extent of the law. But the law didn't apply to pregnant women who might need an abortion. But somewhere along the line while passing this bill, the words got jumbled and it made it seem like it was legal for pregnant women to murder anyone that they want. So for a brief period of time, they could have killed someone and got away with it. Thankfully, they realized their mistake before this happened. Starting off this countdown, we have the wait. In 2008, a law was introduced which made it mandatory for citizens between the ages of 40 to 74 to have their waists measured regularly. Women can only be 35.4 inches and men can only be 33.5 inches. If you are found bigger than that, then you have to lose weight according to this law. Not only that, but you might even be subjected to fines. I mean, Japan 
Japan is known for their low obesity rates, and this is one of the factors as to why. In our ninth spot today, we have the ice cream. Now, this is a very bizarre law. Basically, it's illegal to put ice cream in mailboxes. First off, who in their right mind would even think to do something like that? Like, I'm done with this ice cream. Where should I put it? The garbage? Hmm, no, the mailbox. So, this law was implemented after a postal service worker put a chocolate ice cream in the mailbox in 2006. Since then, it's been made illegal and offenders are subjected to a hefty fine. You could be imprisoned for up to five years or be fined around 4,000 USD. In our eighth spot today, we have your neighbor's mail. Now, I'm sure this has happened to you at least once. But you go home, you check your mail, then you realize that the envelope has your neighbor's name on it. Oops. The mailman delivered your neighbor's mail to your address. So you're like, no problem. I'll just walk to their house and pop it in their mailbox. Boom, wrong, no, arrested. In Japan, it's illegal to hand your neighbor's misaddressed mail to them. This is featured in Article 42 of the Postal Law. Basically, they have this in place to protect the privacy of both the sender and recipient. So if any mail that's not yours accidentally gets in your mailbox, you have to send it back to the post office and then they handle it, which seems like a lot of work when they literally live next door to you. But sorry, that's just how the law is. In our seventh spot today, we have the divorce law. This is another pretty wild law. So if you're a woman and you get divorced by law, you have to wait six months before remarrying again. And if you give birth to a child during those six months, the child is legally your ex-husband's. As for men, well, they can just remarry instantly. Now, there actually is somewhat a reasonable explanation behind this, somewhat. So let's say the woman does remarry instantly after divorce, and then she finds out, oh no, I'm pregnant. Well. How would she know who the father is? So the six month rule is in place so that it's gonna be clear who the kid's father is. In 2016, the law was amended. Now the law is women can remarry immediately after divorce as long as they aren't pregnant. If they are, then they have to wait 100 days to remarry. And a child born within 300 days of divorce is still legally considered the child of the original husband, even if it's not his. In our sixth spot today, we have the married couple. Now, most married couples do live together, but in Japan, they must. It's illegal for married couples to live separately unless they have a just cause. Now, why is this a law, you may ask? Well, it was passed to prevent divorce rates from spiking. If you're living away from your partner, the separation might take a toll on your relationship. But like I said, most couples do live together after marriage, so it's not that big of a law. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with indecent exposure. In Japan, it's illegal to expose your thighs or your bum bum in public. The law was passed in 1948 under the Light Crimes Act. However, this law is rarely enforced, and most women still like to wear mini skirts in public. But if the cops are really out looking for people, then you could be arrested and put in jail for up to 29 days. While we're on the topic of legs, crossing your legs in Japan is considered very casual and improper. In Japan, you are expected to sit tall with both feet on the floor and never cross your ankles over your knee. But don't worry, there's no law surrounding this so you won't be arrested for accidentally crossing over your legs. It's more so a manner thing, you know, it just can be perceived as rude. In our fourth spot today, we have smoking. Now, most people smoke outdoors and think that's the proper place to smoke. Well, not in Japan. Outdoor smoking is actually banned in Japan. The only place you can smoke outdoors is in designated smoking areas. But smoking is prohibited on the main streets. If you want to smoke, it has to be in these designated areas. They do this to be courteous of the people who don't wish to partake in smoking. What else might surprise you is that many restaurants and bars let you smoke inside. In our third spot today, we have drinking. In Japan, you are allowed to drink in public. It's one of the few countries where it's fine to walk around with a beer in hand. In fact, they even have vending machines that sell alcoholic beverages in public. That being said, if you're hammered walking around the streets and being rowdy, you can be arrested. That's a no-no. Plus, drinking is usually an evening activity, so it's frowned upon if people see you walking around with a drink at like 10 in the morning. Moving on to number two, we have the walkie talkies. Okay, so you're planning your trip to Japan. You got your essentials, you got your underwear, your toothbrush, your toothpaste. Did you bring your walkie talkie? Now I know what you're thinking. Who would wanna bring a walkie talkie with them to Japan? Don't ask me, maybe you have kids that get lost easily and it's too expensive to have an international phone plan. Well, if you're planning to bring walkie talkies, think again. It is 
illegal to own walkie talkies bought from another country. Now, this actually has a really good reason behind it. Japan relies heavily on their radio network to relay important information. Any foreign walkie talkies can possibly interfere with their signals, so they made them illegal. If you're caught with one, you can face one year in prison with fines up to around 9,000 USD. And in our number one spot today, we have the dancing. For the longest time, dancing at public venues was illegal. That's right, dancing was illegal. The only place you could dance was at venues with a special dancing license. And you could only dance until midnight. It was illegal as soon as it struck 12. They did this in 1948 as a way to try and get rid of prostitution in these dance halls. Just recently, they changed the laws so you can dance after midnight. But the venue has to keep their lights on. So as soon as it's midnight in Japan, the lights turn on if you wanna keep dancing. If venues don't follow this law, they could get in serious trouble. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below where you are from. Do I have any viewers from Japan here? If so, let me know about these laws. I'm actually fascinated. Kicking off the list at number 10, pedestrian crossing. Okay, I see this far too often in the city. People just walking across the street whenever they want. They do a little, a little wave, a little smile, and then they just jaywalk right in the middle of like a highway. Everybody's slamming the brakes, and old Peggy Sue is just crossing wherever is most convenient for her. It's not fair. Well, Article 40 of Beijing's traffic law stipulates that drivers in motor vehicles can't just suddenly stop, even if it's at a crosswalk. Yeah, so if somebody's about to walk at a crosswalk, they have to wait until drivers go by. It's forbidden to stop at these crossings, and if you do so, you're risking a fine. Hopefully, just a warning. Just a warning not to stop at crosswalks. It's kind of weird. That's an odd slap on the wrist. Hey, I noticed you stopped. Um, don't. See ya. Number nine, never nude. Okay, how do I word this one here? We've all heard about it in some way, I'm sure. You know those websites that we visit after the sun goes down? Maybe you're scrolling through Reddit even, some random threads pop up, you're like, okay, sure, that's not what I clicked. It happens. I used to download music from the internet, the things I've seen in pop-ups alone, horrifying, I have to wash my eyes. Well, in China, the government monitors the internet, so none of the adult content really makes its way to your eyes ever, even if you wanted it to. You get what I mean? Anything scandalous is censored. Objectionable material as well, just in general, won't make it to the screen or even the book. Yeah, you can't even write about being nude because they'll toss literature right out. Only think dirty thoughts, don't say them. Number eight, born this place. The hukou system is an interesting one. When you're raised in a small town, you can't wait to grow up and move. Maybe it's the city life for you that you yearn for, or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're sick of hearing trains go by every morning and you wanna to head to the country and hear some crickets. Having the choice to visit and move back and forth, rent out these places, that's a privilege. Depending on where you were born in China, you may be limited to the areas that you can and can't move to. You might literally be stuck living in the country. The government monitors every single citizen, so if you spend more than three days away from your residence, you have to register for a temporary residential permit. They have the system in place so that residents can't just all migrate at the same time to cities and then cause a food shortage. Number seven, family time. Chinese culture centers heavily around respecting your elders. That's a huge element. And really, we need to enforce that everywhere, if I'm being honest. That's a great law. Yeah, I said law. Back in 2013, China introduced an elderly rights law, meaning they're not being neglected anymore. You don't visit Gam Gam, well, you're going to the slammer. Loneliness among the elderly is a major issue, so companies will even allow time off to visit your parents. My heart feels warm knowing this, honestly. My first job was at a retirement home, and I used to love it. I used to keep my headphones out, I used to talk to all the old ladies, all the old dudes. I was like 16 years old, I was a garbage guy. I would do recycling. It was the best. I love talking to them. They're lonely. Talk to them. Adults are legally required to also stay in the loop, not just visit, shake a hand or two, and then leave. No, you have to spiritually connect with your elders in China. You can't just phone it in, literally. If you feel bad now, hit that thumbs up and go call your grandma. Number six, unauthorized reincarnations. Yeah, this one's fun. China's authorities created a law so Buddhist monks can't be reincarnated there without legal permission. Of course, always got to get legal permission even to reincarnate. The State Administration for Religious Affairs believes that this was an important step that they had to take. This was put in place to limit the power of the Dalai Lama. So two separate Dalai Lamas might be chosen in the future. Yeah, like Captain America, different timelines. This is insane, hear me out. Beijing's view of the current Dalai Lama, the 14th, he's now 86 years old, and he said that when he was 90, he would make the choice whether or not he would be reincarnated. 
which could end a role that's been in Tibet Buddhism for over 600 years. So yeah, like I said, it's a big deal. That's where laws come in play and make this whole process tricky. The government, they're trying to limit the power of the Dalai Lama since he's been living in exile in India since the late 50s. So we could have Beijing's approved Dalai Lama that was, you know, reincarnated and the one identified by Buddhist monks, two different ones. So if you're planning a reincarnation anytime soon, well, you better get approval from China first. The people of Tibet are very unlikely to accept a Chinese Communist Party appointed Dalai Lama. Number five, work friends. This next one's a little lighter, and honestly, if this rule was in place over here right now, well, a lot of my friends wouldn't have jobs. You can't date coworkers in China. Yeah, and what's even better than that is that if you date somebody, sometimes your work will assess who you're dating, like outside of the field, and then they have to approve of them. That's amazing. This internet company in China, their dating rule in the workplace got leaked. And let me read some of these rules out, and then let's see if we agree here. Rule 42, males who have been employed for less than a year and females who have been employed for less than three months are prohibited from finding a boyfriend or girlfriend in the company. Okay, you gotta bust some tables first. Rule 43, female employees who have found a boyfriend outside the company and have decided to have relations with him must take the initiative to tell their superior. Only if the relationship is fitting for the company can she then continue to be employed and those who fail to report are directly expelled. So if you worked for Pepsi, Carol from Coca-Cola's accounting would be a no-go. Get what I'm saying? Rule 44, male employees under 25 are restricted from finding a girlfriend in the company. Hashtag grow up. Rule 46, frequently changing boyfriends and girlfriends within the company is prohibited. Those who have changed more than three times will be permanently expelled. So choose wisely. Number four, one child policy. Immediately darker. This one was phased out recently, but I have to bring it up. Introduced in 1979, the Chinese government made this rule where a majority of couples could only have one child. This was done to control population growth, but of course, from a human rights point of view, things got a little dicey. See, come 2015, things didn't magically change, it just switched to a two-child limit. And then finally, come 2021, it's completely phased out. The government saw this plan as a way to keep things running smooth, but in doing so, they reduced the fertility rate. And there ended up being a labor shortage because seniors needed those kids, as in the only one of those kids, to take care of them. No one was left to work, see what I mean? As per point number seven. Number three, tickets please. Medical systems are different everywhere, and in China, having that many people, things have to run smoothly. It's a must. There's more often than not a wait line for most commodities. They have something called healthcare tickets over there. Honestly, I kind of agree with this. I'm pretty on board. If you're looking to see a doctor, you gotta buy a ticket first, like a movie, a really slow, boring, coughing a lot movie. You can buy these tickets like you would movie theaters through an app or through a website, whatever works best. Because if you don't have a ticket, it would be an extremely long wait time just to see a doctor and talk and then plan something. After they've bought a ticket, patients can register it to a specific doctor that fits their needs, rather than wait in a room full of sick people all going to the same person, that slow process that I'm used to over here in Canada. This way, patients in China can just go specifically to the doctor that they need, rather than get referred over and over and over again and wait in these long lines. Do you agree with this fast pass system? Sound off below. Number two, busking. Here in Toronto, we have Busker Fest. It's amazing. My friends perform in it. It's loud. It's full of energy. It's an outdoor variety show. If you've been to any major city, at one point you've seen a kid butchering an Ed Sheeran song. That's busking. Buskers are common, and in Hong Kong, they're really not. You're not allowed to whip out a banjo, throw down a hat on the sidewalk, and start improvising with locals. It's an offense to play any musical instrument in the streets. So keep that tromboning to yourself. And finally, number one, banned. To cap this list off on laws you didn't know about, I figured I'd just rapid fire a few things that are banned in China. All of your favorite things, most of them are websites. Google is a no-go, YouTube as well, so you won't find my face over there. And speaking of face, Facebook too is banned, which honestly isn't really a total loss. Reddit is not allowed, so say goodbye to your late night scrolling. Netflix too is blocked, so no more binging and Netflix and chilling. Wikipedia, blocked. Zoom was blocked for a hot minute. Messenger, of course, being part of Facebook, or I mean Meta, is blocked. So if you wanted to block somebody, you couldn't because Messenger was blocked. Hmm, I'm saying block a lot. We're all blocked. No more local rappers as well spitting bars on your newsfeed either because SoundCloud has been blocked for eight years. I'm on board with this one. This one's fine. Until podcasts came out, we're like, okay, like, drop those. When we're done with scripts here, we toss them in Dropbox. I'll never take Dropbox for granted again because over there it's blocked. Imgur has been blocked for a couple years now too, so no more GIFs. GIFs? GIFs. GIFs. Definitely GIFs. Mm -hmm.